It was a clear and calm night over southern Germany. A gentle breeze was blowing over Lake Constance. The town of Überlingen, located on the northern shore of the lake, was quiet and peaceful. Most of its residents were asleep, unaware of the tragedy that was about to unfold in the sky above them. At 11.35 p.m., two aircrafts were flying over the lake, heading towards each other on a collision course. One was a passenger jet, the other was a Boeing 757, a cargo jet. Both planes had departed from different airports and were en route to different destinations. The passenger jet was carrying 60 passengers and 9 crew members. Most of the passengers were children from Russia who were on a school trip to Barcelona. The Boeing was carrying only two crew members, a British captain and a Canadian first officer. They were heading to Brussels, where they were in their shift and rest for the night. Both planes were flying at an altitude of 36,000 feet, which is the standard cruising level for most jet airliners. They were also flying at similar speeds, about 930 kilometers per hour. The airspace over Lake Constance was controlled by a Swiss company, Skyguide. However, on that night, the control tower in Zurich was understaffed and overloaded. Only one controller, Peter Nielsen, was working on two workstations at the same time. He was also dealing with technical problems and his backup system was offline for maintenance. Nielsen did not notice that the two planes were on a collision course until it was too late. Meanwhile, the traffic collision avoidance system on both planes had detected each other and issued warnings to their crews. But the pilots didn't trust their systems. If both planes had followed their TCAS system instructions, they would have avoided each other by about 180 meters. At 11.35 p.m., passengers and crew saw the Boeing on their left side, but it was too late. They collided over Überlingen at an altitude of 34,890 feet. The Tupolev broke into several pieces and fell into flames. The Boeing lost its right wing and engine and spiraled out of control. Both planes crashed into the ground, killing everyone on board. The debris from the planes scattered over a wide area, mostly in a forest nearby. Some parts also fell into the lake and into the town of Überlingen. Miraculously, no one on the ground was injured or killed by the fallen wreckage. The news of the collision shocked and saddened the world. It was one of the worst air disasters in history and the worst in Germany. The story was not finished yet. Vyatli Koloyev, a Russian architect who lost his wife and two children in the collision, was devastated by his loss and became obsessed with finding out who was responsible. He blamed Peter Nielsen, the Swiss controller who had been on duty at the time of the collision. On February 24, 2004, Koloyev killed Nielsen at his home. He then called the police and confessed to his crime. He was arrested and charged with murder. What do you think about that? Was Peter the only one responsible? Or was it the pilot's fault for not trusting their TCAS system? Comment below and subscribe for more of this type of content.